now we're on. Uh, this is a time when we can have favorite hymns, if you would like. 2062. It can also be known as Stump the Musicians. So, okay, we'll see what we can do.
for one more. Five oh four, and I'll tell you what. Let's do as we are singing that. That will also be our prelude, so the um, uh, acolytes can come in at that time. Five oh four. blessing it is to have you here to worship and praise the Lord together. I pray that you feel God's presence, knowing that you are loved, knowing that you're forgiven, and knowing that God desires a relationship with each one of us. I'm going to have a prayer, and then we'll have announcements. So I'm going to ask you not only to open your hands, but I'm going to ask you to open up your hearts and your minds. Let us go to the Lord. Good morning, Lord. We thank you and praise you for this day that you have made. 
What an awesome opportunity it is to come and worship you and, and praise you and feel your presence and know that you are worthy to praise. Dear Lord, this is so true. And I imagine I could ask anyone in this congregation and they would be in agreement. But dear Lord, I'm only going to speak for myself. Many times my focus isn't on you. Many times I can say with my mouth, but my heart and mind may be far from you. Dear Lord, I'm, I'm holding on to anxiety or busyness or, or brokenness. And I thank you, 700 times your word tells us to come to you. We weren't meant to carry it. So I pray today that the Holy Spirit would work in each one of our lives. That the Holy Spirit would loosen the grips of the things we're so t tightly holding on to. And that we would truly surrender it and lay it at the foot of the cross. Give it to the one that can do all things. Give it to the one that is not limited. Now we have empty open hands to receive the blessings that you have for each one of us. We have empty open hands to receive your love, your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness. And gracious God, you have chosen us to be used, to share what we have received from you, that love and grace and mercy to a, hurt, to a world that is hurting, to a world that is broken. I also pray if there's anyone that needs a special touch today, that they'd feel your presence, know they are loved, know that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. Minister to each and every heart. These things we pray in Jesus' precious name. And all of God's children say, Amen. Amen. So at this time, does anyone have announcements? Are there any announcements? I've got a couple announcements. Uh, Nancy had a birthday yesterday. I'm not going to get uh, I'm not going to get cute about it and add up all the numbers and such. But we're celebrating that this afternoon with our grandson, who also has a birthday on the same day in Salina. The other thing I'd like to mention: uh, Ginger Wooten, Gibhart Wooten, had her picture in the paper today as uh, becoming vice president of Brown. Pardon me, Brown Maggie. St. John's Military, and uh, I want to congratulate the Gibharts and the Wootens, and I'm sure they're very proud of the uh, successes that Dale and Ginger have had. So congratulations, folks. Um, from the missions team, we are going to be doing the uh, van in the parade. So. Um, you can come walk with us. We'll be passing out candy. We'll probably have some balloons on it. and We're just making our presence known as um, a light in the world for our church. So hope you can at least get a good amount of people to walk. And if you don't want to walk, you can ride in the van. And we'll just leave the doors open. And then you can just wave that way. And hopefully no one falls out. But, you know, no. Anyways, so that will be coming up. Thank you. Uh, last Sunday, I was approached by somebody that said our UMW bulletin board needed to have something on it, so <clears throat> I decorated it. <clears throat> it has an umbrella on it, and under that umbrella, there's a list, and they've gone through the kitchen, and it's a wish list. We're going to have a kitchen shower in September, and the list is quite long. Um, I have a... I attached a little bucket over there, but it keeps falling off, so it's sitting on the pew that's over there. What you do is if you want to bring, like we have 30 white dish towels. I don't think anybody wants to give 30, but if you want to give six, you mark out the 30 and you put a 24 there and you write on the pieces of paper I have over there that you will donate six white dish towels. This is going to be on... September the 7th or 6th and if you don't want to come to our shower this is open to the all church you can just bring your gift and leave it over there on the pew and we will take them downstairs but we have a huge list of things that we need in our kitchen this is the reason we're opening it up to the whole church is because everybody uses the kitchens in some way or some form at some time thank you
Are there any other announcements? Okay. Uh, yes, uh, I actually just snuck in the back. Uh, I just wanted to uh, invite all of the trustees that are available to tomorrow evening's finance meeting. Uh, we'd like the trustees, if they can make it, to be there around 7.30. The current insurance agent will be there to review our policy and a couple of other options. And we really need to make a decision. We've kind of delayed it. Uh, pending getting the roofs done and it looks like that's almost accomplished so a special invitation to the trustees I'd better mention again about the Beth Moore Bible study coming up uh, this uh, will start August 26th on a Sunday at 6 o'clock and then I'm going to have a second one the same week which will be Thursday mornings at 930 the book is of Esther which we've done before and we have quite a few signed up who never got to take that study. But for those of you that did, just remember, you're welcome to come back and, and sit in on it again. Thank you. I'll bring the books next week. Are there any others? Okay. Yes, that'll be fine. Daryl, come back here. We watched this young man grow up. Years gone by from Canopus now. <clears throat> and I was visiting here in this church. It was a few years ago. Yeah, a few years ago now. And I was leaving, and there was a young man at the door. Uh, he said, uh, give me a J. He caught me off guard. I don't know if he's even here. Uh, we used to do this together at the other church, you know. Yeah. Then, uh, can I tell them? I mean, this is how it started. Okay. This, <laughs> is, this is what it started. I mean, this was basically how I came to love Jesus Christ. So, you want me to start or you want? All right. All right, brother. Give me a J. J. Give me an E. Make do with us. Oh, yeah, that's right. Join in. <laughs> let, let, let me start now. You First, want to start? Yeah. Right. We'll restart in a moment. You know, the Bible, the Bible says <laughs> we have an enemy. His enemy is the devil. And sometimes he comes as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's still trying to do that. That's why we have to be on guard and be ready. Right? Because right. Proverbs says, the righteous, we are to be bold as a lion. Right? Right. right. Never be ashamed. Never be ashamed of the gospel. His name is Jesus, the Christ of the gospel. And this young man here has inspired me by the stand he has taken to stand up for Jesus, not be afraid to say, give me a J. Now we can take it on and they can share it with us, okay? <laughs> Are we ready now? You guys, you have a part in this too, all right? Each one of us, all right? But there's our cheerleader. He's going to okay. take it off, Okay. All right, now, brother, give me a J. J. Give me an E. E. Give me an S. S. Give me a U. U. Give me another S. S. What does that spell? Jesus. 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 Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. God loves you. Bless you. We thank you for coming. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right no you're not going to get off that quick <laughs> all right are there any other announcements <laughs> any other spelling uh, <laughs> all right okay well if not now's the time for greeting one another and since you're already using your voices why don't you at least tell three people god loves you and there's nothing you can do about it all right
Thank you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Join me in the call to worship, if you would please. Have mercy on me, O God. According to your faith love. According to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Join me in the prayer in unison. Father in heaven, I ask you right now to please help my heart be tender, because I know that sin makes it hard. Please let the blood of Jesus cover all our sins. Let us know if there is some area where you want me to enter into the process described in the sermon. Please give me eyes to see the truth about areas where I need to apply these seven steps. Please make me sensitive to your Holy Spirit, that I might not excuse that which is unholy. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you. Now we'll have a hymn number 362, so if you remain standing, nothing but the blood. you may be seated and at this time is uh, we're going to hear from Deb about moment for missions okay from Pat all right Okay, I have worked with this um, college ministry for a while, 
that's okay. I love doing it, and I would also take help. If there's anyone inspired to help me or has ideas, I'm all for it. So please don't think it is my job. It is our job. What I seek from you today is money, <laughs> obviously, um, because our um, mailings cost us a little money. Every time you go down to the post office and you buy new stamps or you mail a package, you know it takes the money. Um, I try. Um, to make sure that we have a mailing. It's really close to once a month, not every time, but we do a, a welcome back to school. We do a All Saints Day. We do a, um, around Christmas time and Valentine's are usually, you know, whatever. Um, and it's all for the idea that we need to stay connected with our kids and we need to support them during a time of their life that um, there's a lot pulling on them and they need to know that we're behind them. So uh, whether you are sharing your monies, I, I covet your prayers for them and the program that we keep our kids in the fold and, and um, they find a place to, um, to worship and grow in their faith. Just a, a recap a little bit, and I may not have all of the kids, and I apologize if I've missed someone, and this is also a plea that if you have someone that we need to be sending to, please let the church office know or myself know. Um, David Krolik will be a sophomore, and I'm not sure what he's studying, but he's up at Concordia. Um, Grant Glazier, one last semester, so they will... Um, see him off in December. Jordan is um, down in, at Kansas Wesleyan as a junior, um, just forging ahead. He's doing some marketing as well as his music things, I think, connected with a radio station right now. Is that right? Yes, got a nod there from a family member. Mark Coffines is in his last year of master's study, so two semesters and life will go on for him. So. Happy for him. Natalie, um, soak up down at Salina again, um, sophomore, um, pursuing, I think, the criminal justice and, yes, anything else to add to that family? No? Okay. Um, Zach Jacobo um, has moved from Pratt to Hayes, I believe. Is that right? Yes, I'm getting some nods. So pursuing his interest in wildlife and um, land management, I believe. Wildlife, we hope it's the right kind of wildlife, don't we? <laughs> um, I, that's not a judgment on Zach. He's a good kid. <laughs> um, Kylie McGreevy is working towards paramedic, finishing that up, and I don't know when she finishes that. Um, Rim Cravens is going to um, Collie County and going to be playing some basketball and doing some studies. Correct? Okay. And Daryl Augustin to Fort Hayes and... Um, exercise kinesiology sort of thing. Okay, so there you go for an update. Okay, we want to keep them all in our thoughts and prayers throughout the school year. So at this time, I want to ask uh, the children to come forward. This is children's time, and so with the young disciples, please come forward. How are you guys doing? All right. Do you know this is your last Sunday before school starts? Have you thought about it? Boy, what, wasn't it wonderful the preacher bring that up? All right. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be exciting. You're going to see some friends that you haven't seen all summer long, right? But that's going to be awesome. Okay. And we're going to be praying. And next week, you're going to bring up your backpacks. We're going to bless them. And that's going to be... A, Wonderful thing also. But uh, today, uh, my sermon's on the Psalm 51. And Psalm 51 was David. And David was a king, and David loved the Lord. But you know what? He sinned. He sinned against God. He made a really bad mistake, right? It was more than a mistake. He just sinned. And sin is missing the mark. He came short of God's glory. And, uh, and then a guy came to talk to him. And he said, hey, I want to tell you a story. 
And he told him a story and he got all upset. And he said, whoever did that, that man's life should be taken. And you know what? Nathan said, it's you. Oh, wow. And so we're going to talk about the seven steps when we mess up big time. You know, God is always with us. But we're going to hear about how through the prayer of David, how God's going to use that, okay? Because God desires to have a relationship with us. He loves us. He forgives us because he's of his loving kindness and he's compassionate to us. Did you know that? Awesome. All right. Okay. Also, what do you have or you don't have that you had just last week? A brace on your arm, right? But it's, is it healed now? You have to be careful a lot of stuff. But it is healed. And when we, in Psalm 51, like when we mess up big time, God will heal us, all right? We just ask, we've got to come forward and say, God, I messed up big time, I sinned. But I know that you will forgive me, I know that you will heal me. And that's even going to get better, right? Your arm is even going to get stronger than it was before because God is good, right? Awesome. Okay. What do you think we need? Do we need prayer and then maybe a snack? Yeah, all right. Prayer first, though, right? Yeah, okay. We did good on that one, didn't we? All right, let us pray. You guys want to repeat after me? Uh, yeah, okay. Gracious God, thank you for loving me. And we all know that we all sin. We all sin. Gosh, you guys are really repeating. Don't say that. <laughs> and we thank you for forgiving us. And continually loving us. Always loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys repeat and repeat. Very good. Awesome. Okay. You can hold it? All right. Because your arms are much better. All right. Okay. She wants to give you one, maybe. Now at this time we'll have special music. New Hope Trio will be performing for us.
Thank you so much. What a blessing that was. Now's the time for sharing our joys or concerns and blessings. And Does anyone have a, any joys they'd like to share? All right. Yes, Tim. Well, tomorrow there's a person in our congregation who gets to go to start um, nursing school. And so that's a joy, and I know she's a little nervous, but she gets to start her nursing um, stuff starting tomorrow. So just keep her in your prayers. She'll be a great nurse. All right. Anne will be lifting you up in her prayer. <laughs> I would just like to thank everybody for prayers, um, extra prayers. <laughs> During my surgery and recovery, it's kind of been a slow process this time, and it's kind of tested me. So, um, but I think I'm on the right road now, and school's starting tomorrow. I better be. So, anyway, I do appreciate all the prayers from the church. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. All right. Well, I have a joy. My girls are home and will be starting school this year. Jenna will be a senior. So this year we'll be trying with me going to nursing school and her going through her senior year. And Evelyn will be at KMS, and that's a joy. Um, when they're gone in the summertime, we always miss Evelyn's birthday. So our joy today is we get to celebrate her birthday today. So if you do see her, tell her happy late birthday. All right. I ran into Heather Barda in a, down the hospital aisle this uh, week, and she is planning surgery on Thursday. And she did okay for me to announce it, so please keep her in your prayers. She's having trouble with an ankle and major surgery, I think. So. All right. So keep Heather Barda in your yes, prayers. Yes. She has okay. a sister from um, Colorado who is going to be with her, but still a long road. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any others? I have one, uh, I have a nephew, and uh, he'll be a sophomore at Texas A&M, and he's been at a church camp for the last six weeks in, in Branson, Missouri. And he was going to go up and see my folks before he went back down to Dallas, and uh, I guess they drove all night, so he was sleepy. He had their cruise control on at 70 miles per hour and fell asleep, hit a sign, and uh, rolled the vehicle in a field and walked away and we praise God for that his name is Braden and uh, I had the opportunity to talk to him and pray with him and and uh, and he knows that God just provided safety for him and he also knows that you can always get another vehicle and uh, but what a blessing that uh, he uh, walked away and uh, so I just praise God and give God the glory for that are there any others are there any others well, if not, let us go, Lord, in a moment of silence and then pastoral prayer. Let us go to God. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you. Dear Lord, as we heard joys and concerns today, joys of the opportunity of going to school, joys of school starting, Dear Lord, joys of being able to celebrate birthdays. Dear Lord, joys of seeing you deliver someone that could have taken their life. And I thank you and praise you. Dear Lord, just minister to each and every heart. For those that, like Heather, will have surgery. For those that are recovering from surgery, dear Lord like Rosemary and Robert, and dear Lord, we continually lift up Dorothy, dear Lord, just minister to each and every one. I pray they'd feel your presence and love. Also, gracious God, I lift up those that have lost loved ones and grieving, dear Lord, and I thank you again. As your word reminds us in James 4, 8, as we draw nearer to you, you draw nearer to us. We thank you that we have a God that is active. We, we have a God that loves us and cares for us. And, and dear Lord, we heard your name repeated. And what a blessing it was. 
when we spelled out Jesus, because that we aren't ashamed of the gospel. And it's because of you, dear Lord, that we are saved. It is because of you that we have life. Because of you, we have hope. And we thank you and praise you for all of this. And just continually to minister to each and every heart, we thank you again for first loving us. These things we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now at this time, we'll have a praise Him, and it is my life is in you, Lord. And number 2032 and the faith we sing are on the screen. and our hope is in the Lord. And at this time, we're going to have an offering. And with the ushers, please come forward. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you and praise you as we're about to receive this offering. Just minister to each and every heart, knowing, dear Lord, that you're going to use this offering to make a difference here in Ellsworth and throughout the world, that people will hear the good news of Jesus Christ, of his life, death, and resurrection, that we serve a risen Lord, the defeated sin and death. And we thank you and praise you. And dear Lord, I also ask that you would bless those that are able to give, not only financially, but of time and service and prayer. So minister to each and every heart. We thank you and praise you. And our life is in you. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen.
Today, the scripture comes from Psalm 51, 1 through 12. You'll find that in your pew Bible on page 640. And I'm also going to ask that you would keep it open throughout the service because I'll go farther in those 12 verses. But, uh, so let us go to God's Word. And this was written by King David. After the prophet Nathan came to him and after he had gone and sinned. So let us go to the Lord in the Scripture. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my inequities and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in my inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sin, and blot out all my inequities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, I humbly come before you today. Dear Lord, knowing that we all have sinned, we all for sure, fall short of the glory of God. And sin is not having God in the center of our lives. Dear Lord, it's going our own direction, our own desires, and not yours. Dear Lord, we'll be talking about seven steps today. And it isn't the seven steps that save us. It isn't the seven steps that is the solution but it is how you use them to draw us closer and have a great understanding of David's prayer. A man that was broken. A man that was in need of a God that loved him. So minister to each and every one of our hearts. And I thank you and praise you again for this time. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Back in 1999, and I like sports. Many of you know that I went to the training camp and, and I, uh, the Chiefs, and the training camp was a lot much, well, it was a lot better than Thursday night football game. But, but anyway, it, it was good. They, they, they were undefeated in training camp. But, but anyway, back in 1999, there was a defensive back, and he was an all-pro. He was very smart. He was very intelligent. He could follow the eyes of the quarterback, and he led the league in interceptions. His name was Eugene Robinson. He once played for the Green Bay Packers, and he would already had a Super Bowl ring, and now he's playing for the Atlanta Falcons. And this is Saturday night before the Super Bowl, and he is receiving an award to being the most upright, the, the greatest Christian in the NFL that year. This man lived a life and a testimony for Jesus Christ. And so he had won an award. And later on, early, really Sunday morning, his wife received a phone call. And she found out that her husband, Eugene Robinson, was arrested. He was arrested by an undercover cop for solicitation of prostitution. This man just 
had won an award. He was found out because him messing up big time. Now, we all make mistakes. We all mess up big time. I don't care how smart you are, how good you are. There will be times that you are a fool. There are times that you are going to sin. And from this psalm today was King David. This was a man that is noted in Acts later on. Over a thousand years later, a man after God's own heart. But he messed up big time. He was probably in his 40s, they believe, when he was channel surfing on the roof of the temple, of, of his palace. Well, it wasn't the network, or it wasn't using a remote, or it wasn't looking on the internet, but he knew where to look. He should have been at war with his men, but he stayed home. And he also went up on the roof. He knew what he would find. I'm pretty sure he had seen that channel before. Her name was Bathsheba. And he looked. But he didn't just look and turn away. But he said, bring her to me. And she spent the night with him. I'm going to keep this PG, folks. So don't worry, parents. But, but anyway, later on found out that she was going to be with child. It was going to be his child. So he had to do something with her husband. And he was a wonderful soldier. He's dedicated to the king, to the country. Uriah was his name. Even when David invited him to stay with him or, or be even with his wife so he could get out of that sin, or he thought out of that sin, he wouldn't do it. So he had to send him back and even sent a letter. He was even holding the letter himself and gave it to the general. And his life was taken. Probably David is thinking, well, you know, I don't feel good about what I did, but no one knows. And then a friend, a prophet Nathan, started sharing a story with him. And then that story was the truth. It was what he did. So let us look at these seven steps, if you would. We're going to look through Psalm 51, this prayer that God provided for us, because we all mess up big time and what we have in the Lord. So the very first thing that we see that David did, the very first thing is that he came clean. He said, have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. I've messed up. I've messed up. I've done wrong. I'm not going to say, well, everyone else does this. Well, you know, I'm the king, so it's okay. No, he came clean. And that's what we are to do. God knows that we have sinned, but we are to come clean and say, God, I've fallen short. I've sinned against you. I've sinned against you. And not only come clean, but ask God for forgiveness. Because David knew who God was. David knew that he was a God of steadfast love. He was a God of Compassion. Actually, Drew knew that too because when I asked her about compassion, she said yes. I don't know if it was because the candy was around the corner, but she did know about compassion. <laughs> he asked God for forgiveness. He could look at what he had done. The next verses 2 through 4, wash me thoroughly for my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. My sin is ever before me. Against you and you alone have I sinned. And done what is evil in your sight. So that you are justified in your sentence. And blameless when you pass judgment. He's saying, 
I've wronged you. I have sinned. But I know because of who you are, there is forgiveness. He knew from the Old Testament that God would atone, that God would forgive. This is a God of mercy, a God of love. I want you to hear this. There is no sin that is too great. There is no sin that is too great that you can't be forgiven. Jesus said the only and pardonable sin is denying the Holy Spirit. Denying the Holy Spirit. And then own. The third is own your responsibility for your sin. Not only did he come clean, not only did he ask for forgiveness, but he owned his own. His own responsibility. Indeed, I was born guilty, he said in verse 5. A sinner when my mother conceived me. I've fallen short. I'm owning up to it that I need you to forgive me. I need your salvation. I'm in need. And then request a fresh work of God's grace. Oh, I forgot one. I've been doing this all day. I don't know about four. Let me talk about four again. Accept God's forgiveness on God's term. You know, God has forgiven you. But you need to receive it. Many times I've heard people say, I know God has forgiven me, but I can't forgive myself. The only thing is, when I look at that, now we're putting ourselves above God, aren't we? God has forgiven you, and you need to receive it. I'll tell you a real quick story. Real quick, okay. Um, There was Johnny and Sally. They went to their grandparents. They had the opportunity to go to the farm. And Grandpa has already made Johnny a slingshot, and he couldn't hit the the broad side of the barn. He's practicing and practicing in the woods. He couldn't hit it. And then he starts coming back in from the woods, and he's getting pretty close to the house. And Then he sees Grandma's favorite duck. Well, he picks up a rock, and like I said, he hadn't hit anything. And he takes aim, and he lets it go, and Grandma's duck's neck goes like that. He looks around, no one sees him, he thinks. So he takes the duck, goes back in the woods, and buries the duck. All is good, right? So it's time for lunch, and it was a great lunch. And Grandpa says, who wants to go fishing with me? And Johnny says, all right. And then Sally, oh, good Sally, says, remember the duck. Remember the duck. Remember the duck. And Johnny says, I think I'll stay home, Grandpa. I I think I'll do dishes. Sally got to go fishing. And any time that was anything that was going on that would have been fun, would have been great for Johnny, Sally helped him out. Remember the duck. Remember the duck. Well, this has went on about two days. And Grandma said, Johnny, I, I need to talk to you. He said, yeah, Grandma. He said, she goes, uh, you know that duck of mine? He goes, uh, yeah. Johnny, I saw you come out of the woods and take the slingshot and hit that duck. And I want you to know, because I was washing dishes from the window, I could see it. And I want you to know I forgave you then. But you need to receive that forgiveness. So God isn't remembering no duck, okay? So we need to accept God's forgiveness. On God's terms. Now that doesn't mean that you won't be disciplined. But the discipline that God has. Yes you will be disciplined. But you know you're still loved. And still holding on you. And still loving you. Now let's go to five. Request a fresh work of God's grace. And when I look at that it says. Create in me a clean heart O God. And put a new and a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take away your Holy Spirit from me. The word create is also the same word creative in Genesis. 
where God created something out of nothing. And when David is saying, created me, he's saying, take this filthy heart of mine, the one that has sinned against you, and cleanse me. It's only a work, a miracle of God that can create something that is so despised that he can make good out of it. And this is what David is saying. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a, a clean heart. And don't remove your Holy Spirit from me. Don't remove your Holy Spirit from me. And that I would sustain me with a willing spirit. Sustain me in, in verse 12. Sustain me with a willing spirit. Because yes, I've fallen short. Yes, I've been forgiven. Yes, I may have consequences, but God is going to be with me and carry me through whatever these consequences are that I have because David knew not only he sinned against God, but he sinned against his family and against Israel. When we sin, there is never a private sin. It affects so many. It affects so many. And then restore I mean, resolve to use the past failures for future ministry. He's asking to resolve to use these past failures. And we see this in verse 13. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing loud of your deliverance. What he's saying in this prayer is, God, because when people read this and know that you have forgiven me, that there's hope for them. Because you can forgive all. You can forgive all. And he's also saying in verse 14 and 15, Deliver me from the bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing loud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. He's saying, put me back in the playing field. Put me back. And use me. And I can tell others where I have fallen, but I can tell them of a God that picked me up and raised me up and has forgiven me. And then pray for limited fallout in the lives of others. In verse 18 and 19, do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem when you will delight in right sacrifices and burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings, then the bulls will be offered on your altar. Because earlier in verse 16 and 17, he's talking about the offerings. Yes, those are the offerings that God asked for, but what was more important was about a relationship. It's about a pure heart, about a contrite heart. And how important it is to have a relationship with God. And now he's saying, now I pray for limited fallout in the lives of others. He's talking about Jerusalem. He's talking about the, of Israel. Yes, I've sinned, but dear Lord, keep your city strong and draw people closer to you. So let us pray. Gracious God, I thank you and praise you. We have all fallen short. But dear Lord, in these steps, it isn't the steps, but it is you. That we would come clean. That we would ask for forgiveness. Own our responsibilities of our sin. Accept your forgiveness on your terms. Request a fresh work of God's grace. Resolve to use past failures for future ministry. And pray for limited fallout in the lives of others. We thank you and praise you. Now, gracious God, we come to you in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of heaven. Now, if you're comfortable standing, would you please stand for number 354, I Surrender All.
Before we have the benediction, you know that God is always at work, but not always does everything work. We have a water leak in the basement at the bottom of the back stairway, uh, stairway and the water is coming into the church, has been shut off. So I just want to let you know, uh, you can't wash your hands right now. Could the trustees that are here today, would they please meet in the basement after the church? Now let us go to the benediction in unison. God, I know I need more than seven steps. I can't do this on my own. I need to experience your presence at the point of need. Allow your Holy Spirit to have great freedom in my heart and mind. Help me cooperate with his work in me. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit, amen and amen. God bless you all.